Okay, done. Okay, a very uh, good evening, okay, everyone. Okay, I believe uh, uh, some of uh, the presenter they already email the secretariat. Okay, they stated that they uh, uh, couldn't be here. Okay, this evening. Okay, for the presentation session. So, but then we are um, blessed to have everyone here. Okay, uh, so uh, for the juries, okay, uh, you don't have to evaluate me. I'm not uh, not the candidate for the best presenter. So I, I, I excuse myself, okay, for the for the best presenter award. Okay, so I, I believe that the only um, yeah candidate is uh, Dr. Nia. Okay, uh, Dr. Nia will present. Okay, so this is the list. So I just want to just what uh, just have a housekeeping. Okay, so housekeeping uh, rules. Okay, so the first one is uh, QOL. Okay, so 109. So this one you, you, you don't have to evaluate. Okay, this is by me and my team. Okay, uh, determinants of working life balance in the hotel industry. Okay, frontline employees perspective. Then we have, uh, we should have uh, number two. Uh, but my number two is not uh, present okay, this evening, okay, Dr. Noel. Okay, then we have the third one is uh, Abdul Rahman is here. Mm -hmm. Is Abdul Rahman in the room? IHT108. Yes, yes, he's here. Oh, okay. So welcome, okay, Abdul Rahman. Okay. So, uh, so the second presenter will be Abdul Rahman Hazi. Okay, then we have, uh, I think, a video, right, uh, of the uh, SMA103. But then the video will not be account, uh, uh, accounted as a uh, uh, best presenter uh, uh, nominees. Okay, so um, Madam Silverina, is the video is here, the impact yes. of social media? Yeah, ready just to play it later. Okay, so we have number three here. Okay, so number five, the same with number two, the presenter uh couldn't be able to, uh, to be here in the station okay then we have the last one okay we have from indonesia okay ibunia okay so ibunia will be the last presenter okay uh can we start everyone yes yes fine okay. okay okay so before that maybe uh i just um say some of the housekeeping rules okay provided by the organizer okay okay so this is the uh, house rules okay before we start I yeah, just share a bit about this. Okay, um, this is the conversation. Okay, uh, my checklist actually. Okay, before that, I introduce myself. I'm the chairperson of the session. Okay, my name is Anderson. Okay, and my uh, co-chair is uh, Madam Silverina. Okay, and then we have uh, our support team. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Amiro. Okay, and uh, uh, his team. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Saiful and also Dr. Zahara. Okay, then we have um, uh, juries. Okay, juries for the best presented award. May may you introduce yourself, the juries? The juries is here in the room. All right. My name is uh, Valerie Chansulin Binti Abdullah. I am also a lecturer with UITM, but in uh, the Sarawak campus, campus Samarahan. And uh, I've been teaching in UITM for like 19 years, so involved in Mecca, quite a number of conferences. Um, and well, here I am. <laughs> Thank all. you. Yeah, our first jury, okay, for the best presenter. Uh, our second jury, please uh, introduce yourself. Okay, hi, good evening, everyone. Okay, my name is uh, Suhaida Halami. I'm also from um, uh, UITM Sarawak campus. Um, I'm a lecturer from the uh, Faculty of Information Management. All right, that's all. Thank you. Okay, so I go to number five. Okay, so number five here stated that, that okay, you have to mute your mic during the presentation. So make sure everyone uh, have a group photo. I believe, uh, I think, uh, is it Mr. Saiful you will take the group photo? Or Mrs. Ab Amiro? Yes. Amiro, Amiro. Okay, so uh, okay, uh, so after this, we can take the group photo. Is it at the end or in the beginning of the session? Uh, the, 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 the okay, uh, so you get you just give us the cue so we can uh, stand by for the group's uh, photo. Okay, then I will introduce the presenter and the title of the presentation. Uh, make sure each of you uh, please present uh, within the 10 minutes okay, for presentation and five minutes for the Q&A. 
Okay, so the Q&A may be from the jurist. Okay, then um, if there uh, repeat any audience questions into the microphone and if there's no questions, okay, ask the question uh, that I have developed for you. Okay, so I think uh, uh, any questions regarding the session? Before we move on with the uh, uh, group photo? No. Okay, thank you. So I think, uh, Mr. Amiro, I, uh, I hand to you this session for the group photo. Okay. So everybody is open the camera. Okay, so cheese. All right. One, two, three. Okay. okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Amiro, our person in charge of the IC for this session. Okay, I think it's getting hotter here. Okay, let us start. Okay. In Malaysia, is I think 27 degrees now. It's, it's uh, like, I think it's after the rain, I think the, the, the temperature is quite high. Yeah, not so sure in Indonesia. Okay, so I will be the first presenter. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned uh, just now, so don't have to evaluate me, the, ju the jurist. Okay, so I just share uh, my presentation for uh, this evening. Okay, so let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. And you can uh, hear my voice clearly, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the topic that we have um, um, developed and we have uh, do some analysis and this is the result, okay? Uh, so the title of our uh, project or the study is de determining the attributes of work-life balance in the hotel industry. Okay, this is from the frontline employees perspective, okay? So the authors, okay, my co-authors is No Faika Baharum, okay, Dahlan Abdullah, No Hidayah Cik Ahmad, Johanna Adlin Ahmad, okay. All of us are from the uh, Faculty of Hotel and Tourism Management, UITM, uh, Chawangan, Pulau Pinang. Okay, so this is the presentation outline. Okay, I will introduce the background of the study until the end of the presentation is on the discussion and implication. Okay, there's a, a conclusion at the end. Okay, so the background of study, okay, I will introduce what is work-life balance, okay? So I, I believe most of you, you, uh, you understand what is work-life balance, meaning that you have to balance between your work and life, but then not every single of us can do the balance, right? So I think uh, one of the, the challenge is how to balance work and life, okay? So individual work and life is connected to the organization, okay? So if you have good work-life balance, Okay, it can uh, increase okay, the fi financial performance of the company, fulfillment and production of the employee. Okay, most of them, they have uh, discovered that it also linked to the OC, which is the organizational commitment and also the OB, okay, organizational behavior. Okay, this is by a study by Ostrizen et al. 2016. Okay, but then as I mentioned, okay, there's also a disruptive, okay, a challenging uh, time, okay, especially when you have to balance between your family, uh, you work, and sometimes you have your own personal career also, okay? So there's a challenge in terms of you don't have, have enough, enough time, okay? You have to uh, control your emotional, okay? And also your physical energy, okay? Which can cause bad effect in both areas, okay? This is by Klazek, 2013. Okay, so this is a, uh, I think this is a, a summary, okay, of the country that have the best work-life balance, okay? So based on the top 10 countries, as you can see here, it's obvious, okay, most of the countries are in the Western part of the world, okay? Uh, this is the, the first is Netherlands, okay, with 9.5, okay? The highest, uh, the highest, uh, the full mark is 10, okay? It's stated here, 10 is the best balance, okay? Best balance between work and life, okay? So Netherlands is the top, okay? Yeah, it's the top in the rank, okay, 9.5, okay? And you can see here, it's Russia, this is top 10. Okay, so you can see like most of the Eastern countries like Japan, like Malaysia, okay, we are um, commonly known as a hardworking country. But then hardworking countries, uh, we ha uh, have a detrimental effect on the work-life balance of the employees actually. 
So the problem statement, okay? So previous studies have enriched the body of knowledge, okay? It's obvious that uh, most study have uh, investigated this from the uh, Western perspective, okay? So most of the study, they have uh, limited studies that conduct in Eastern countries such as Malaysia, okay? So and also not, uh, most of the study, they just uh, mentioned about other industry, okay? And then uh, maybe limited study in terms of hotel industry, okay? Uh, especially hotel frontline employees perspective. Okay, in terms of the work-life balance. Okay, purpose of the study. So our study, okay, uh, we are interested to examine the determinants of work-life balance among the uh, operational level employees in the hotel industry. Okay, we focus uh, in the, uh, on the frontline employees okay, at, at three-star hotels in KL okay, or Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so based on the literature review, actually the literature review is quite extensive, but I try to summarize it. Okay, we, uh, we found that uh, there are five okay, five factors or attributes that lead to uh, work-life balance. Okay, this is uh, based on several studies, uh, recent studies. Okay, first is the flexible working hour. Okay, so flexible working hour is you have the freedom okay, to determine uh, what time you want to punch in or uh, leave the office. Okay, number two is management support. Okay, so management support is in terms of the uh, supervisor support. Okay, uh, their boss. Okay, and also how the management can uh, enhance the quality of the working space okay the working uh, place okay then employees benefit is number three okay this is in terms of their uh, welfare okay how good the company okay provide all the necessary like uh, insurance like uniform staff meal and so on okay uh, number four is social support okay this is based on uh, family support okay so as mentioned by number two is management support so number four is quite different okay social support meaning that from the uh, friends, okay, family, and relative, okay, social support. Number five is job autonomy, okay, job autonomy is similar to how they have power, okay, to do their job, and then without the um, uh, instruction, okay, so they have the freedom, okay, to choose, okay, what to do, and they have the uh, lib liberty to decide, okay, what's the best uh, they can provide to their customer. Okay, this is a method, okay, in terms of research method, okay, we have divided this into three sections, okay, sampling and population, we are using the purposive sampling whereby we have determined the sample uh, frontline employees. Okay, and the uh, location, okay, recent location is at Three Star Hotel located in Bukit Bintang, Kuala Lumpur. Okay, why Bukit Bintang? Because Bukit Bintang is very famous, okay, for tourist attractions. Okay, most of our Three Star Hotel located in Bukit Bintang. Number two is data collection. Okay, in terms of the data, okay, we have uh, conducted a self-administrated survey. Okay, whereby we distribute the survey and then the uh, respondent they fill in the survey but then in order for them to understand we are there in case they need to uh, quite, uh need to uh, query or questions uh, in terms of the survey okay uh, this is uh, done in one week period okay so the respond okay the valid response, we have 150 valid responses okay so the data was analyzed using spss and also partial least square SEM or structural equation modeling. So for the data analysis and result, okay, we have divided this into several parts also. Okay, so first we have to do the reflective measurement model assessment, okay, which composed of convergent validity, which uh, divided into composite reliability or CR and AVE, average variance extracted. Okay, and for the discriminant validity, okay, we have the Fauna and Laka criterion and also the cross loading. So this is the result of the convergent okay, validity. As you can see here, we have uh, uh, six construct. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six construct. Five are the endo uh, endogenous okay, or the independent variables. And we have here the, uh, determining variables. Okay, so this is the attributes that we predict uh, that can influence work-life balance of the frontline employees. Okay, so this is the item. Okay, for management support, we have uh, six item and so on here. Okay, so the loading is quite high. Okay, which is above the threshold 0 0.7. Okay, so the AVE is also very good. Okay, the average variance extracted is below 0 0.7. Okay, with the lowest here is 0 0.744. And this is the composite uh, reliability. Okay, it is uh, very good. Okay, it's above 0 0.7. Okay, the, the standard uh, composite reliability threshold. Okay, with the highest one is 0 0.965. Okay, management support and also social support. Okay, so in terms of the convergent validity, as you can see here, it's all established. Okay, there's no problem with the 
uh, convergent validity of the study. Okay, this is the structural model uh, modeling uh, equation. Uh, sorry, structural modeling uh, path. Okay, of our model. Okay, as you can see here. Okay, this is uh, 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 extracted from the smart PLS. Okay, this is the the, the 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 software that we use. Okay, to analyze the data. Okay, so this is a uh, management support. Okay, flexible working hours, employee benefit, and social support, and also job autonomy. Okay, so the R square is very good. Okay, it's zero point eight five eight, meaning that all the uh, independent variables here, all the factors contribute to 85.8% of the dependent variables. Okay, so this is the uh, result of the structural model analysis. Okay, so we have here our hypothesis. We have five hypotheses, and it's all supported except for number three. Okay, so the highest factors that contribute to the work-life balance is management support. As you can see here, 4.441. Okay, T value is 4.441 is very high as compared to the other one okay so, so the other uh, factors so this is the r square okay 85 percent 85.8 percent so this is a f square and this is a q square okay okay in terms of discussion and implication okay so this uh, study highlight okay, the importance of management support which have which have been identified as the most significant predictor of the work life balance okay so the management have to provide a very good supportive uh, working environment okay for the employee okay this is important since this can uh, lead to employee performance retention and also likely to be dependent on their ability to balance between life and career so i have come to the end of my slide so for conclusion okay so based on the uh, study can okay, we have found that some limitation of the studies okay if, as you can see the study is uh, conducted with a limited set of variables we only have five variables. Okay, so uh, future studies should explore other significant variables, and also may, uh, future study may may want to compare uh, study, uh, may, may compare the respondents. Okay, for example, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, and also uh, Indonesia. Okay, so this is uh, is also important based on country and also based on the uh, operational level and also managerial level. Okay, and lastly, maybe future study want to consider mixed method study, whereby they can. Uh, conduct qualitative uh, study followed by qualitative research approach. So that's all from me. So I open this session to the Q&A. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, just now I see my slide. Uh, yeah. E Yes, if I may, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Anderson, for the yeah. presentation. That's um, come, Andy. Were there any? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Were there any counterintuitive results there? In the uh, so far, uh, yes. there's no there's no counterintuitive um, result in the finding. It's only that uh, we found that only one is not supported, and uh, we try to justify it based on the maybe. Uh, the previous study is conducted in the Western part, right? So it must must be have something different in terms of the culture. So as you can see from my slide, okay, the uh, the thing that is not uh, considered as significant is the employee benefit. So maybe in Malaysia, uh, in the front line uh, or, or in hotel industry, so the in, uh, the the management or the hotel companies they provide less uh, employee benefit uh, as compared to the Western part. Okay, because I believe that the Western company, they have more caring in, uh, to their employees in terms of they have maybe more benefits, right? So maybe in Malaysia, we don't have that like many perks or many benefits. So that might be the reason why employee benefit is not supported as one of the predictor, okay, one of the uh, significant predictor of the work-life balance in uh, our study. Yeah. Is it answer your question, Mr. Abdul Rahman? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe okay, uh, future research, maybe future researchers can look into that. Yeah. Uh, can look into employee benefits in Malaysia. Yeah. Or yeah. conduct a maybe comparative we can do study. Some, yeah. Maybe we can so, uh, do some cross comparison between your country and mine. That will be good uh, research, right? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We can do it here with uh, Morocco here. Yeah. We oh, have Morocco. the hotel, oh, okay. hotel in this. Yeah, the hotel industry oh, is important. Okay, yes. that's good. Yeah, that's good. 
Yeah, let yeah. the IMEI know. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more question before we proceed to the next presenter? Okay, I, I believe I can call to the next presenter. Okay, let me. I think the next presenter is uh, Abdul Rahman, right? Can you introduce yourself and your number so that the jury can, uh, you know, like yes. have their invention form ready for you? I pass over yes, to sure. you. Yeah, Dr. yeah, Abu sure. Rahman. Thank you very much, Andy. Thanks a lot, Professor Andy. Uh, my The number is uh, IHT. 108 um, IHT 108 and I'm just going to share um, a window yeah okay just to share okay IHT yeah. 108 climate for creativity as a mediator of the link between empowering leadership and management innovation insights from yes. the hospitality industry in Morocco yes that's right yeah thank you very much okay this is it my uh okay i'm just sharing now the uh um yeah uh, please could you tell me can you can you share can you see my huh can you see the powerpoint yes 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 great we can see thank clearly you. yeah so my name is uh, abdurrahman uh, hasi i teach uh, management at the uh Al akhawain university here in morocco um, yeah, different topics in management. I teach cross-cultural management, uh, uh, organization behavior, and yeah, that's my. In terms of research, I do research in leadership, innovation, cross-cultural management, case study method as well. Um, uh, so the uh, the topic of my presentation it's about the impact of empowering leadership on management innovation with the mediating effect of climate for creativity. So basically here, the objective of the study was to look into, uh, in the hotel industry in Morocco, we wanted to see if leaders in the hotel industry who adopt an empowering leadership style, which is different, of course, as you all know, different than transformational and other uh, transactional. It's more about empowering employees, giving them more latitude uh, for them, uh, to feel that they have control and to to avoid that feeling of uh, powerlessness, that they are powerless, they don't have any power. We wanted to see that if a leader adopts that, would that yield more in a management innovation, innovation in terms of administrative procedures uh, and practices within the hotels? And we assessed if this relationship is mediated by creating a climate for creativity in the hotel. And this is basically about having resources uh, to be more creative and to be more innovative within the hotels. So that's the, the topic. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, there is a gap in the literature, of course, because overall the studies have been, that have looked into the impact of leadership looked more looked more uh, into the imp uh, different classical leadership styles such as such as transformational and transactional i don't know if you you yeah you still see my powerpoint no no uh, doctor I no think. oh sorry yeah. about that okay. yeah it's um sorry i'm just gonna do it again sorry about that okay take your time no worries yeah sorry um, can we have the presentation? Can we have it in a presentation mode so we can see the slide clearer? Yes, sure. Um, uh, yeah. I sh okay. Oh, I should have it in there. All right. Uh, 
can you can you see it now? Yes, we can see the presentation slide. Full yeah. screen, full screen. Yeah, full screen. Yeah, full screen. Oh, oh, great! Thank you, yeah. thank you. So I was saying that. Uh, okay, so here, why did we work on that? We worked on the uh, empowered leadership because there is a gap. Um, studies so far have looked only at the uh, classic styles of leadership, such as transactional, transformational. But this leadership style, which she's very interested because it empowers employees, it gives them latitude, it gives them uh, self-control, um, and it makes them feel important and their work important has not really uh, been explored and uh, we have not studied its impact on management innovation. So that was the, the gap in the literature. And uh, this is our research model here, empowered leadership on management innovation with the mediating effect of climate for creativity. Uh, so we uh, hypothesized, so the first hypothesis, we proposed that empowered leadership is positively related to management innovation. So the independent and the dependent variable. And here we argued that, why? Because the uh, empowered leadership give, gives importance to the followers' work. It values their work. And it encourages creativity um, uh, because empowering leaders uh, give voice to their employees and subordinates. And they also contribute to reducing complexity and get others to rally around them. So because of that, we made this uh, first hy hypothesis. The second hypothesis is the uh, climate for creativity is empowered leadership is positively related to climate for creativity. The independent variable is related to the mediator. And why is that? We argued that because, uh, and, uh, first of all, the climate for creativity is defined as the degree of support and encouragement an organization provides its employees to explore uh, creative and innovative approaches. And uh, we hypothesize this relationship. Why? Because uh, uh, the... Uh, because uh, empowering leaders provide employees with the with different resources and tools to be creative and they reward and recognize creativity at work within organization organizations and uh, the third uh, hypothesis is climate for creativity the mediator is positively associated with the dependent variable which is management innovation and this also uh, was backed up and supported this hypothesis. Why? Because in an organization that provides adequate resources to employees and different policies, uh, the uh, management innovation would be higher than organizations with less resources and no policies about creativity. And then the, uh, the main, the bottom line, it's the mediation. So we hypothesize that claim, climate for creativity mediates positively the relationship between empowered leadership and management innovation. Uh, so we, uh, it was supported by uh, the concept of empowerment uh, because no study had, had, had tested this relationship. So we're the first to do that. So we based it on different on uh, concepts related to empowerment and also because uh, because of the characteristics of empowering leaders, such as being interested in um, uh, in the work of employees and providing them with self control, self control. So when those empowering leaders uh, provide employees with different resources and policies uh, to for creativity, so that uh, climate for creativity mediates the relationship between empowering leaders and management uh, innovation. Uh, so we conducted the study within hotels, uh, three, four, and five-star hotels in Morocco. So we got a list, a governmental list, which included 422 hotels, and we all contacted them. We used the technique of the a drop and collect, uh, and we collected um, uh, 130, uh, 39 responses from which only 131 were considered valid, which represent a response rate of 31%. And we have here some demographics about the hotels. Uh, we used two different sources, that's very important. So we collected data 
the data about management innovation and climate for creativity we got it from managers of the administrative department whereas information about the leadership style we got it from the front desk managers why because those front desk managers interact a lot with the ceo and we used to different sources to avoid the same source bias and to increase the validity of the data uh, the independent variable empower leadership uh, we use the ahern uh, scale management innovation vaccaro and uh, others mediating variables from kim and yoon and uh, the, the the yeah uh, we use the tr back translational technique um uh, the uh, yeah uh, and we tested the questionnaire in five hotels with five hotel executives in some uh, my issues uh, so here we have the uh, correlation descriptive uh, analysis and the uh, correlation between the the variables correlation are high uh Kronbach alphas are also high for empowering uh, they are all above uh, 0.9 um and we use the structural equation modeling technique uh, for that. Uh, so the measurement model fits the data. So we have the CFI 0.95, RMCA 0.08, TLI 0.93. The structural model also fits the data. To test the mediation, we use the Bayesian, Bayesian analysis uh, through AMIS, AMIS uh, software, AMIS 24, version 24. Um, and uh, here we can see the chart about the direct effect and indirect effect uh, and the total effect. So yes, there is a mediation here. Uh, if you look at the empowering impact of empowering leadership innovation, so the direct effect is point about point 13, but the indirect effect is point 40. So there is a, a mediation here. Um, and all the hype were confirmed. So there is a positive relationship between the independent dependence, between the independent and the mediator, and also the, there is a mediation here. Um, so uh, what does it mean? What does it entail? So what does it mean in, in other words? It means that, yes, there is a portion that it's direct in a hotel, if you have an empowering leader, that would increase management innovation. But there is a more important portion, if that empowering leader, if that hotel has a, a, a climate for creativity, meaning if they have the resources, if they have the resources, right? That's what it means, that's what it entails. Uh, uh, a more important portion. Yes, it's good to have a leader who delegates, who empowers employees, who increases the significance of the work, but more importantly, that leader needs to create, to set up a climate for creativity. Uh, so here it's aligned. The results here are aligned with existing literature. Um, we have a number of studies here uh, that leadership, or leaders are drivers for innovation within organizations so it's aligned with that uh, the empowering style of leadership can promote innovation innovation and managerial processes and practices by motivating subordinates and this is uh, uh, this is studied by Dieterts and Burris 2007 so it's aligned with that and here the way you motivate them by giving them the resources and more latitude giving them more flexibility to be creative so it's uh, the results are uh, aligned with a number of studies from the extant literature. Um, the study suggests also that climate for creativity is positively with management innovation, and it's aligned with previous studies. Um, uh, a number of studies, like Iqbal's and other studies here, um, such as when you have adequate resources. To, imp to implement employees' creative and innovative ideas. So that uh, helps increasing the level of creativity within organization. Uh, so when hotel uh, senior managers and top managers provide their subordinates with the required resources, 
and they provide them also with the need latitude or flexibility and the formal recognition. Sorry about that. Formal recognition. So those employees sh uh, demonstrate and show innovation in managerial processes. Um, so that's the, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to be more uh, target specifically some. Uh, and, uh, and here we can also infer that in the absence of an appropriate climate for creativity, uh, hotels uh, and hospitality firms' ability to undertake management innovation would be limited. Yeah. Uh, the study has a number of implications. So in terms of theoretical implications, as I mentioned, it was the first study on its kind to look into the impact of empowering leadership on management innovation uh, through the mediation of climate for creativity. By doing so, the study bridge contributed to bridging a gap in the existing literature. Um, and it helps also advance in knowledge about the effect of empowered leadership, which is a relatively new leadership style in the uh, innovation sphere. Um, in terms of practical implications, it's clear that uh, hospitality firms that would like to have more of uh, uh, administrate more of uh, managerial innovation. They not only need empowering leaders, but also to create a climate for creativity. So that's the, the bottom line in terms of practical. Yes, like every other study, the study also had some limitations, um, uh, such as the fact that we used only one mediated variable, which is climate for for creativity. Uh, we could have used other, you know, maybe uh, other studies can use, maybe other studies can use more mediators such as climate for initiative or uh, organizational encouragement or innovative culture. Uh, also, we focused on the organization level. So the, uh, not the individual as opposed to the individual level. Maybe other studies in the future can use a multi-level uh, analysis or perspective by using characteristics of individual employees, their motivation, their personality and so on. Uh, our research was uh, cross-sectional in nature. So, but to establish causality, as we all know, we need more longitudinal and panel studies, right? Maybe future studies can do that. And um, yeah, uh, we collected data from uh, only from one. And the reason we did that just to uh, homogeneous to look at a homogeneous sector as opposed to including different so and to to conclude um, management innovation is extremely important in today's organizational life. Uh, and it's about adopting new management practices processes structures and so on so it's uh, to uh, even more actually by the way we collected data before the pandemic now after the pandemic with this uh Agile management, it's needed even more. Now, if before it was a luxury, now it's a mandatory. Eh? It's a necessity. Uh, so this study is the first of its kind, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so the uh, conclusion that we draw from it is if you seek innovation in management in hotels, leaders, not only they need to empower their employees or to talk the talk. Eh? It doesn't cost anything to empower them. But they need to walk the to, the, the to walk the talk by giving them resources what they need. And my presentation comes to an end. I try to do it in a uh, efficient thank way, or effective way. Hello. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rahman. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi. I think thank before you, Dr. before Randy. our yeah before our co chair. Uh, before our co chair will uh, uh, summarize your presentation, I, I would like to open the QA session okay, to the yes. rest of the audience. Yeah. Any questions to Mr. to Dr. Rahman? I think I will not <laughs> summarize, but I will just ask um, one question um, yeah. out of my curiosity. <laughs> so, Mr. Abdul Rahman, um, very interesting presentation. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I just want. I'm uh, just curious. Um, who are these hotel managers? Are they local Moroccan, or are they foreigners? 
And do you have any example of management innovation that they practice, which allowing um, climate for creativity among their employees? Uh, uh, yeah, well, the uh, the hotels, no, they're all, uh, yes, we, we do have a number of hotels that are owned by foreigners, like by Spanish owners and French, especially Spanish in the north of the country and French. Uh, but the ones that we collected data from are all Moroccan. Uh, why? To control for the national culture, right? So we did here a design control, not a statistical control. So because if we included uh, international owners of hotels, like from France and from Spain, especially from Italy, so we would have that issue. Maybe the there is something to do with the cultural background of the owner and so on. So because of that, so and to be homogeneous, we only collected data from Moroccan uh, managers, CEOs and uh, managers. From, uh, yeah, uh, hotels owned by, uh, by Moroccan owners and Moroccan managers. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so, yes, yeah. And about the second question, it's, uh, they're different when we ask them to give, sometimes we would ask them also about a few examples because it was a questionnaire that only had to complete uh, by answering whether they adopt, adopted recently uh, new managerial, uh, managerial innovation in the structure, in the way they did the work in the, uh, and they were different, uh, a, a lot of them, most of them, they would de-layer, uh, de-layer, the the organization instead sometimes in making decisions instead of uh, going through the whole hierarchy they would have some task forces and that was one of the recurring practices yeah uh, in making yeah some projects or developing no strategies to tackle a competitor or a newcomer they would instead of following all the layers they would create a task force that would include uh, members from different departments and that would uh, uh, report directly to the CEO or the general manager of the hotel. That was one of the practices. Yeah. In, uh, right. in those, uh, yeah. Thank, thank you. you, Dr. Brahman. Thank yeah, you, thank uh, you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Andy. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions to Dr. Brahman? Maybe our juries, no questions? I was uh, more interested in knowing, you know, what sort of uh, examples of the uh, management innovation that you mentioned just now? Could you explain uh, in more detail? You did mention about uh, the layers and all, but like um, what kind of freedom do they actually get, you know? Because um, it, it, you, you give me the impression that uh, there's not much freedom given to the uh, management of these hotels. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. When we asked when we collected the data from from them the questions were generic generic questions yeah mm -hmm. and we used that scale that was developed by uh, by vaccaro yeah i can show the scale it's about any changes in the structure for example in the last three years yeah any in the any changes in the managerial practices but but in, in interacting with them, in interacting with the respondent, we would ask them and would, they would tell us informally what kind of new changes, right? So in the questionnaire, they did not have to specify. Uh, the, the, the question in the questionnaire is just about, did you introduce any changes? Did you use any, any changes in the last three years in the structure? Yeah, for example, the 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 way the work is structured about the example that i mentioned it's about delay about uh, delaying the uh, about delaying the uh, the organization in a way yeah uh, for example to develop uh to create a new a new unit that it's part of the hotel one of the examples that were discussed with the respondent were shared by the uh, the respondent to follow the whole strategic management process it's bureaucratic. It would have to go through different layers. I think it includes so many uh, players, but some of the hotels, the way they did it, they had a task force. A task force that, yeah, it was, uh, that had the mandate and it was a more of a more flexible approach. Uh, 
to come up with new strategies, to come up with new uh, ways to counter and to face the competition. And that, that task force had to discuss with other, with heads of departments and key employees, and then they present and they discuss and they present the work to the general manager who suggested just a few changes or tweaking to the, uh, to the strategy. Thank you, Dr. Abraman. Yeah. Thank you for the yeah. Thank yeah, you. insightful answer. Is it answer, you. Uh, is answer your question, Madam Valerie? Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I think we are uh, like uh, behind time, <laughs> so we have to yeah. move on to the next uh, presentation. Yes. Thank you very much for the thank insightful presentation. Okay, Dr. Abraman. Okay, thank you, Dr. Andy. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Silverina. Thank you, Dr. Valerie. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, we move on to the next uh, mm -hmm. presenter. Actually, the next presenter just sent us the video. So the video will be played by our co-chair, okay, Madam Silverina. Okay, so I just... um mention the title and also the paper ID. Okay, so this uh, this title will not be included in the best presenter nom nomination, okay? So the paper ID is SMA103. Okay, the title is The Impact of Social Media Influencers Have on the Irish Outbound Market. Okay, I pass this to our co-chair, okay, Madam Silverina. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. Um, I think I need um, Dr. Abdurrahman to close his um, sharing first. Yeah, Dr. Baraman, can you uh, close your presentation? Can you stop presenting? Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. Let me know if you cannot see the um, presentation. Yeah. There you go. Okay, perfect. All right. Yeah. You can so, you, you may start now. Hello everyone, my name is Chloe Sparling. I studied in the Limbic Institute of Technology and the topics that are researched for my thesis. We cannot the see the screen, I don't, I'm not so sure about everyone. Outbound market. I cannot see the, yeah, I just hear the voice. I try again. Yeah, I think the same thing happened. Is it okay? We, yeah, we, we cannot see the, 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 the My name the, is Chloe Sparling. I don't know about others, can you see the, the slides? That are researched my thesis. Is it the on the social media. I think uh, Madam Silverman just play the play button. I think, yeah, we can okay. see from this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Chloe Sparling. I studied in Limerick Institute of Technology, and the topic that I researched for my thesis is the impact that social media influencers have on the Irish outbound market. So just some reasons why I chose this topic. Personally, I have a great interest in social media and its platforms. I have an interest in social media influencers, especially Irish ones which include Suzanne Jackson, Ellie Kelly and Shauna Doyle. Um, I personally think there is not enough research done within this area and that it can be definitely furthered and improved. I think that social media is becoming increasingly popular in recent years and there isn't a lot of information out there on um, it within the tourism industry. So just an introduction. Um, within chapter one, I spoke about an introduction uh, within my thesis. In chapter two, I did a literature review. Chapter three was a methodology. Chapter four was a data analysis and findings. And chapter five was a conclusion and recommendations that I had. So some of the aims and objectives that I came up with were to investigate whether social media influencers actually have an effect on the Irish outbound market. Um, to carry out research in order to investigate whether certain age groups are more impacted by social media and the influencers. 
um, to also investigate which platform was the most popular social media platform for the tourism industry, um, specifically when it comes to advertising with tourism related products um, or services for both the consumer and the business itself. Um, and also the last one then was to investigate which factors social media and, and its influences have an impact on. So this could be tourist destinations, um, hotels, attractions, and also modes of transport. So some topics that I researched were the tourism industry as a whole, but also the tourism industry within Ireland, um, the importance of the Irish tourism industry and the Irish tourism consumer. Um, I also investigated whether the uh, tourism industry was moving or not. Um, I looked into Web 2.0 to 1.0 to 2.0 and the changes that occurred within it. Um, I looked into social media and what social media influences were. I also looked at social media and influencer marketing. And the last thing I researched then was Generation Z, which is people born within 1997 to 2012. So for the message. So for the research approach, I took a pragmatism approach. Um, pragmatics recognize that there are many different ways of interpreting the world and that um, and also with undertaking research and that no single point of view gives the entire picture and that there can be multiple uh, realities to any scenario. Um, I used it because it also combines combines both positivism and interpretivism, which allows the use of both quantitative and qualitative research. So for my quantitative research, I used surveys within SurveyMonkey. Um, I also did qualitative research, which were my interviews. Um, these are both semi-structured and non-statistical, and they took place on both Zoom and through email. So I also used a thematic approach within the quantitative and qualitative data. Primary research is often defined as methodology used by researchers in order to collect data directly, rather than depending on the data that has been previously collected. Um, I chose to do interviews and surveys. My five interviews were held, as I said, on Teams and email, and the surveys then, there was 151 of them distributed and completed within SurveyMonkey. So for the quantitative research, I decided to do surveys. Um, there's both advantages and disadvantages to this. Some of the advantages include that it allows the researcher to reach a higher sample size and it allows for a more accurate result. Um, the information can also be collected more quickly. Um, interviews and surveys also provide immediate answers. Some disadvantages that I found were that there's an inability to follow up with the answers provided um, and that there's a limited set of answers within surveys. The qualitative research, this is the interviews. There's also advantages and disadvantages to these. The advantages include smaller uh, sample sizes lead to lower cost. There's also um, an open-ended answer process, which leads to more detail and no answer is right or wrong, as it is all opinion-based. Um, disadvantages then include that it is very time consuming. It takes a while in order to get people to agree to do the interviews and then the taking place of the interviews as well takes a long time. It can be difficult to also replicate the results as the result, the results may differ from one day to the next. People might even have an opinion that may be different one day to the next. Secondary research is information that has been provided to somebody else's work or research. It often includes journal articles, books, ebooks, newspapers, and other websites and online resources. So for the response rate and pilot study, when looking at the surveys, I got had a 100% response rate, which was very successful. When looking at the interviews, there was a 50% response rate. This is due to the fact that I sent out 10 emails um, trying to reach out to people for interviews, and only five of them had responded and decided to um, proceed with the interview. I also did 10 pilot surveys, which were distributed in order to eliminate any errors that might have occurred within my surveys. There was some limitations when doing this thesis. 
Um, firstly, COVID-19 obviously has affected everyone across the world, including people in college. Um, no face-to-face -face interviews could be done, um, which made it a little bit more difficult as people are less keen to want to do interviews online. Um, time is always obviously a limitation for everyone. Um, as a fourth year in college does not last forever, and if you make a slight mistake, it can really push you back in time. So keeping on track of everything is very important. Another limitation is that there was a limit to 40 surveys on SurveyMonkey, which were free to use unless you paid um, an additional fee in order to access the rest of the results. I took a thematic approach when looking at the findings. Um, it was the most appropriate for me for the both quantitative and qualitative research. Um, there were themes gathered from the interviews, um, which were discussed in a thematic approach, which was the most um, appropriate for me. And data was found, which was favorable and also successful as it helped to fill gaps within the literature for me. So now I'm going to talk to you about the survey findings. 150 surveys were distributed, and they were distributed um, amongst males and females of all ages, but the majority of uh, people um, were found to be females between the ages of 18 to 24 years, which is part of Generation Z. Instagram and Facebook tend to be the most popular social media platforms for these people, and most of the respondents said they spent around three to six hours a day on social media, which was quite shocking, as it is a very long time to spend on social media. 55.63% of the respondents said that they did not that they did follow influencers, which wasn't very shocking to me as a lot of people I know tend to follow influencers. 88.12% of people have not traveled to a destination because of an influencer, which I did find quite shocking as um, most people had either um, traveled to a destination, gone to a restaurant, maybe gone to a theme park of some sort um, because an influencer had said it was good. And so I was shocked to see that 88.12% of people had said that they had not. So when looking at the interview findings, I broke these up into four teams. The first team was the opinion on social media marketing. One person in particular said that I thought it had gone from basically non-existent over a decade ago to one of the biggest contributors to overall marketing spend in the world. The second team was that whether social media marketing is the leading marketing method. Four out of five people thought that they did not think it was not the leading marketing method and that traditional media, such as television, radio, and newspapers, was still in the lead. The third team is which platform is the most successful for social media um, marketing. All five of the interviewees said that they thought that Facebook and Instagram were the most successful. This could be due to the fact that it is a large number of users and that it's very easy to use. Instagram and Facebook are also very heavily connected. So a lot of the advertising done within Instagram can also have the option to be posted on Facebook. Um, for the fourth team, it is an opinion on whether social media marketing is or will be successful within the tourism industry. And all five of the people said, yes, they thought it would be very successful. Include influencers, um, per, I think, have an, some impact on Irish tourism consumers, but not as much as I had previously expected. Women use social media more than men, especially for advice when purchasing. Um, YouTube, Snapchat, and Instagram were the most popular platforms for Generation Z. And age, gender, price of tourism attraction, or the destination were all factors that played a role in the influence of the Irish outgoing market on whether they were to, to travel abroad. When looking at my recommendations, I think that more research needs to be done on influencers within the tourism industry and whether they would be successful. I think a more equal distribution of males and females needs to be questioned in order to gather a wider demographic. Um, more research could also be done on social media platforms uh, and which one would be the most successful for the tourism industry, as there is not a lot of research out there about this. I also think that more influences could be used within marketing for tourism, as they are very successful within the marketing industry.
and I would just like to thank you all for listening and have a great day. Okay. Thank That's you very cool. much. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank, you. thank you very much for the uh, lovely like presentation. And it's actually it's by the presenter actually. <laughs> so I, I believe uh, I believe that we cannot um, ask the presenter because the presenter is not here. Okay, so we come to the end of the session with our last presenter, Dr. Nia. Okay, I think the I think Dr. Nia is ready, right? Dr. Nia, can you push the mic? Okay. Okay. Uh, before it, uh, I would like, I would like to say sorry because uh, my English is not too good. Uh, maybe sometime uh, I'm using bahasa. Oh, it's okay. So let me introduce your paper first. May I? Okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, the next presenter or the last presenter for this evening is uh, paper ID CHA108. Okay, the title of their research is The Farming of Aswinanta on the Great Bali's Makeup. I think it's very interesting. So I'll pass to you, uh, Dr. Nia. Okay, uh, it's uh, my share, share screen is already seen. Not yet, doctor. You, you, yeah, not, not yet. Yes, we can see your presentation slide. Okay. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I would like to say uh, thank you uh, for the chance uh, uh, give to me. And <clears throat> my name is Nia Kustianti. Uh, I came from uh, State University of Surabaya, UNESA. Uh, Surabaya and in Indonesia. My uh, title is about uh, the forming of Srinata on the Great Bali's bridal makeup. Okay, like we know that uh, Indonesia has a diversity of cultures with different characteristics from each other. And uh, one of province in Indonesia that has a world famous culture is Bali. Uh, jadi saya mengangkat uh, kebudayaan Bali, ya, terutama dalam uh, make upnya, make up pengantin. Balinese culture is a culture that has long exists and adorns diversity in Indonesia. Balinese culture has characteristic that is identical to the behavior of the Balinese people who have the arts, traditions, behaviors, and attitude of the Balinese people. Dr. Nia, can you press the full screen? So, the full uh, screen presentation, okay. yeah, on the bottom side, near the 69 number there. Full screen? Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, Balinese bridal makeup is a culture heritage that needs to be preserved and developed. Bali Agung bridal makeup is a makeup that is usually used for Balinese bride who belong to the main caste. Jadi ada beberapa kasta di Bali yang di sini <coughs> uh, saya mengangkat pengantin Bali yang uh, kasta utama. Atau uh, ini yang masih lagi belum uh, full screennya. Co coba tekan yang full screen tadi. Uh, 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 sudah, sudah saya mungkin uh, sinyal, sinyalnya agak trouble. Oh, okay, ya, jadi okay. Okay, unstable. Uh, teruskan, uh, Dr. Nia, teruskan. Oke, okay. uh, Bali Agung Bridal Max Up is uh, synonym, synonyms with a luxury and elegance. The main characteristics of Bali Agung Bridal Max Up is Srinata, uh, a form like pious uh, on the bride. Srinata is a forehead decoration so that the face lines look good or beautiful in accordance with Balinese bridal makeup. Srinata's form is described as a dumanggal man, crescent moon. The function of Srinata is to harmonize the shape of the forehead so that it looks elegant, attractive, beautiful to the user. The meaning of the symbol contained in it is it is to indicate that a person has matured both physically and spiritually, dares to break away from his parents, has new rights and obligation. This is the... Belum keluar ya? 
This is the belum lagi. Of Sri Nata. This is the picture of Sri Nata. Belum, uh, belum, uh, Dr. Nia. So maybe, uh, maybe you just uh, uh, off the me like keluar dan uh, cuba presentnya lagi slide itu. Bisa. Okay. Uh, maybe I will try to present using uh, my handphone. I will try. Okay. Ataupun mungkin enggak perlu di full screen. Iya, Bu. Enggak perlu di full screen, Bu. Enggak perlu full screen ya. I think full screen tu yang menyebabkan dia stuck di situ. Uh, bagaimana? Belum belum terlihat. Guna tadi yang ibu bisa juga. Yang tadi ibu. Cuma enggak perlu full screen ya ibu tadi. Guna yang pertama tadi. Okay, I have a trouble with uh, my signal because this uh, rain in here. Oh, okay. It's rain. <laughs> my God. Cuba share yang tadi, Bu. Yang pertama tadi. Enggak perlu uh, full screen, Bu. Okay. <laughs> okay, saya coba. Nah, coba. Sudah terlihat? Sudah, Bu. Sudah, Bu. Enggak perlu full screen. Uh. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, the problem is uh, of Srinata is using the proportional method. Sorry, sorry. Uh, ini terlewat. Terlalu loncat. Okay, uh, this is the picture of Srinata in forehead. Jadi ini riasan untuk uh, da bagian dahi pengantin wanita Bali Agung. Uh, okay, there are two kinds of techniques of in the form of Srinata. They are traditional method and professional method. Traditional method of Srinata forming uses a benchmark of fingers size from the bridal makeup. In practice, it turns out that this traditional method often creates a problem because the bridal makeup fingers have different size as well as the bride's forehead has a different size too. The advantage of this method is that it only uses the finger of the bridal makeup and doesn't need to use a long eyebrow pencil. The weakness of this method is that the bridal makeup fingers have different sizes. The size of the bride's forehead is also different because it uses the feeling of bridal makeup so that the measurements are not precise and the, the shape of the Srinata looks stiff. It takes longer to make. The forming of Sinata using the proportional method is uh, adjusted to the visualization on the face of each bride. The benchmark used uh, is comparison taken, taken from the corners of the eyes, nose, and forehead width. To find a pattern for the formation of Sinata which is uh, considered ideal, it is necessary to look at the proportions of the face, especially the forehead of the bride and then determine the shape of the proportional pattern. Srinata that using the proportional method uses a benchmark for the size of the bride's face. There are the nose and eyes. The shape of Srinata adjusts the shape of the eyebrows so that it looks more flexible and it fast, fast time to make it. Okay, the purpose of this study was to determine the suitability of Srinata on the Bali Agung bread between those using traditional method and tr the proportional method. The benefit, the, the benefit is to provide an alternative development in making Srinata and increase knowledge in making Srinata in Bali Agung bridal makeup. The assessment of the forms of Srinata on eight people who have different forehead shape was carried out by 30 panelists. Okay, this is the result from suitability of the face shape. Based on the suitability of the face shape, the traditional method can be used on normal forehead shape 
small and narrow for head and large and wide for heads and a variety of 60% state that they is suitable to the face shape. While the forming of Srinata with the proportional method can be used on every type of forehead with an average count of 80% suitable according to the shape of the face. Okay, uh, flexibility, if it from the flexibility of Srinata Srinata's form, it looks flexible in the form of a small and narrow forehead. Enough flexible on a small but large narrow forehead, bicycle saddle, as well as a large wide and nonong forehead. Using the traditional method with, with an average count of 40%. While those who use the professional method can be used on all forehead shape, 80% looks flexible. Symmetrical, symmetrical means balance with the shape of the face. The forming of Srinata with the traditional method can only be used on normal shape and small, narrow, but large shape with an average count of 50%. While the proportional method can be used for all forehead shape with an average count of 90% stating symmetrical. And the accuracy of Srinata shape. <coughs> For the accuracy of Srinata shape, the traditional method can only be used on a normal forehead shape, while for the proportional method, an average of 80% can be, can be used on all forehead shape. Okay, the, con the conclusion. The forming of Srinata by using the proportional method on various forehead shape, the result will be better than using the traditional method. But the traditional method can still be used on certain forehead shape. The weakness and limitation in this study, especially in the formation of Srinata with the traditional method, is the shape of the fingers of the bridal makeup that is not the same, so that the shape of the Srinata is considered inaccurate. Uh, this is uh, the picture of normal forehead shape. Uh, ini pembutuhan Srinata uh, by traditional method. And this is a professional method. This is small and narrow forehead, traditional and proportional. We can see that uh, it looks uh, different between uh, traditional and professional proportional method. White and nonong, small forehead. Nonong is mean uh, dahi, our foreheadnya uh, is um, agak menonjol keluar. Uh, is, apa ya? <laughs> Jadi, protruding. Uh, jendul, jendul. Jendul, ya. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is small and narrow forehead. Traditional and professional method. This is small but big narrow forehead. This is bicycle saddle forehead. Big white forehead and nonong. Big and white forehead. Okay, I think it's enough for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ibu Nia. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation. I think uh, Madam Silverina, our co-chair, uh, was waiting for your presentation. I bet she has a lot of questions to ask. Can I, pay to my, I, I, I pass to my co-chair? Okay, Madam Silverina. Yeah, it's very interesting, Dr. Nia. I was so excited looking at what difference does it make between um, the traditional and the proportion because it looks almost similar. Um, okay, I just want to know whether the Balinese makeup, is it similar with the one in Jawa Island? And do you have any, uh, I mean, the young people, do they still wanted to be makeup 
as um, traditional type of makeup, what about the impact of um, other countries like K-pop? Um, you know, the Korean makeup nowadays is becoming like a trend. Is it a threat, do you think, for the traditional makeup in Indonesia? Uh, uh, maybe I will answer with bahasa. Okay. Uh, yeah, boleh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sekarang, sekarang memang uh, uh, semua itu uh, cenderung menuju ke tradisional. Jadi tradisional memang sekarang sedang tren ya. Jadi uh, banyak orang yang sudah beralih ke tradisional. Karena memang uh, tradisional lebih menarik, uh, inter more interesting, and then uh, bisa melestarikan kebudayaan. Ya. Kemudian juga uh, tadi uh, sempat ditanyakan <tuh> untuk Bali, Bali dan Jawa itu memang ada perbedaan dari segi uh, tata riasnya uh, bridal make up. Jadi uh, kalau di Bali tadi bentuk paesnya itu dinamakan uh, Srinata. Tetapi kalau di Jawa, but in Java uh, we call it uh, paes. And uh, the form is uh, different uh, from each uh, bridal. Jadi masing-masing uh, uh, pengantin Uh, memiliki has a karakteristik dari bentuk uh, bentuk serinatanya atau bentuk paesnya. Oke, okay. mungkin itu bisa menjawab pertanyaan. Ya, itu menjawab pertanyaan uh, Ibu Silverina. Iya, sangat menjawab. Iya. Satu soalan lagi boleh ya? Ya, bag ya bagus. <laughs> Madam Sembarina memang ya, ibu dia lebih kepada make up ya. Uh. Eh, bukan. Lebih bukan? kepada tradisi. <laughs> Silakan uh, uh, Madam ya. Ibu um, seawal mana ya um, apa belia-belia di Indonesia di expose kepada make up, -make -up tradisional? Adakah ada program yang um, seperti memberi latihan kepada mereka untuk tahu uh, fungsi dan jenis-jenis uh, make up tersebut. Oke, okay. uh, sebelumnya uh, saya belum memperkenalkan diri. Saya saya ini uh, pengajar di Unesa di jurusan uh, tata rias, tata rias is mean uh, cosmetology education. Jadi di dalamnya itu ada uh, mata kuliah atau subjek about Bridal, traditional bridal especially, and uh, banyak yang uh, banyak yang memang tertarik untuk belajar uh, tradisional, terutama tradisional uh, pengantin tradisional ya. Jadi ada berbagai macam pengantin tradisional di Indonesia yang memang uh, belum belum diketahui ya. Jadi di sana uh, kita membelajar, kita belajar semuanya di sana dari mulai pengantin uh, Sumatera. Sumatera itu juga ada pengantin Aceh, pengantin Lampung, pengantin Batak, kemudian Inja, uh, Jawa sendiri di Java itu ada uh, Sunda 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 Siger, Sunda Putri, uh, kemudian ada Yogyakarta, ada Solo. Uh, jadi uh, there so many uh, bridal in Indonesia. Uh, jadi semuanya itu uh, mereka belajar di Unesa. Semua uh, semua pengantin itu uh, dipelajari di UNESA, terutama yang pengantin tradisional. Dari dari mulai make up, and then uh, hairstyle, uh, sanggul, and then uh, the uh, tradisional kostum, semuanya itu dipelajari. Menarik ya, Bu. <laughs> Terima kasih, Bu. Ya. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nia. Any more questions to Dr. Nia? Uh, I have one question. Boleh, Dr. Andy? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, please, uh, okay, uh, please uh, ni, um, uh, Miss uh, Sohaida. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ibu Nia, uh, maybe uh, you can tell uh, a little bit, maybe in brief, uh, the history uh, about this makeup. History is mean sejarah ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, sejarah. sejarah. Oke. Okay. <laughs> uh, the history. Uh, 
kalau untuk sejarah dari story makeup in Indonesia uh, mungkin sejak zaman uh, kalau dulu ada uh, dongeng 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 is uh, le- legend le- legenda uh, cerita tentang putri 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 raja yang memang menggunakan uh, bedak itu dari uh, tepung beras tepung beras is mean uh, rice powder rice powder and then uh, used to uh, bedak ya uh, us powder and then uh, uh, apa uh, tumbuh-tumbuhan seperti yang apa yang uh, pacar-pacar itu uh, yang menghasilkan warna merah itu bisa digunakan untuk lipstick jadi uh, uh, based from tradisional tradisional uh, dari alam ya Jadi dari alam uh, itu biasanya dulu seperti itu. Kemudian berkembang berkembang uh, itu sudah mulai apa? Uh, yaitu industri-industri yang uh, berkembang sekarang uh, industri make up terutama ya yang menggunakan bahan-bahan tradisional. Mungkin sekarang sudah sudah ada campuran uh, kimianya karena untuk uh, mungkin uh, supaya lebih awet ya untuk uh, apa uh, make upnya. Mungkin yang saya yang saya tahu seperti itu ya. Jadi memang dari zaman dulu terutama putri-putri kerajaan. Jadi in Indonesia has a lot of uh, many many uh, kerajaan ini apa? Kerajaan, kerajaan ya. Eh uh, yang terutama putri-putrinya itu yang memang uh, lebih me, memen, apa? memanjangkan tubuhnya, merias, kemudian uh, berendam di uh, kolam. Uh, mandi susu uh, dan sebagainya. Ya, jadi uh, berawal dari situ. Kemudian ke sini-sininya uh, sudah bisa dinikmati oleh uh, masyarakat biasa seperti itu. Oke, terima Mungkin kasih itu. Ibu. Oke, okay, thank you. Mungkin itu yang saya tahu ya, Bu ya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Dr. Nia. Menjawab enggak Miss Suhaidah soalan yang tadi? Okay. Yes, menjawab Dr. Indy. Thank you. Um, any more questions uh, from the audience? I saw the chat box. Uh, uh... Can you can you read the question, Madam Silverina? You help me to read the question from the yeah. audience. If any question from the chat box. I think there will be few questions coming up. I saw people raise. We have to cut it short. Uh, have to be because we have limited time. <laughs> okay. Madam uh, Sabrina, yeah. All right, Doctor Nia. Hikmat andaman pengantin terkesan atau enggak dengan pandemik COVID-19 di Indonesia? Jika terkesan, ada insentif kerajaan dalam membantu mereka? Ah. Uh. dampak ya dampak dari COVID-19 ya terhadap uh, industri industri uh, industri bright bright make up ya ya yeah, bridal make up yeah. bridal make up ya yeah, uh, I think uh, sangat berdampak ya uh, terutama uh, banyak yang memang akhirnya uh, yang seharusnya uh, dilaksanakan pernikahan atau uh, merias akhirnya dipending dipending dulu kemudian uh, ada juga yang terus dilaksanakan tetapi uh, uh, mengu- apa terbatas ya tidak tidak mengundang terlalu banyak orang ya jadi hanya uh, kalau di Islam ya itu hanya akad akad saja ya jadi akad syah kemudian uh, tidak tidak ada resepsi ya Uh, tetapi sekarang uh, mungkin uh, pandemi sudah mulai turun ya sudah mulai uh, banyak uh, apa uh, perias-perias pengantin yang memang sudah uh, sudah mulai aktif kembali nah banyak juga yang memang uh, orang yang memang menikah ya sekarang ya di, uh, karena memang kondisinya sudah mulai uh, membaik uh, tetapi tetap menjaga uh, protokol kesehatan like uh, using a mask jadi uh, Bridal using a mask, jadi maskernya itu uh, memang didesain uh, uh, match with uh, busananya, jadi matching dengan uh, busananya atau dengan aksesoris lainnya seperti itu, ya. Jadi uh, saya rasa I think is not uh, sekarang ini sudah tidak terlalu 
berdampak ya, tetapi tetap uh, menjaga uh, protokol kesehatan. Seperti itu. Oke, terima kasih Dr. Nia. Enggak ada soalan saya rasa. Okay, Madam Sabrina, is it okay everything? Dah soalan semua dijawab, okay. Because uh, we uh, we running out of time. Okay, uh, so I think that is the end of our uh, session. Thank you uh, each of you. Okay, especially the presenter, okay, Dr. Nia, and also Dr. Abraham. Okay, I want to know, Dr. Abraham, what time is it now in Morocco? Uh, we cannot hear you. Your, your mic is off. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's a good question. It's uh, three thirty p.m. Okay, that's good. You're, I think you are ahead of us by seven hours. Is it ten? Ten thirty there? PM? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Correct. You're, yeah. Ten thirty. Yeah, we are. Yeah, you are ahead of us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. good. I, I'm afraid your time is three in the morning. <laughs> no, no, it's no in the afternoon. Yes. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank yeah. you. No, uh, sorry for anymore? you. It's a little yeah. late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you um uh, being here with us. Okay, thank from you. Morocco is quite far. Okay, yes. I think uh to end the session, okay, maybe the yeah. chair per, uh, chair co chair. Okay, Madam Sidimuna can take a group photo. Okay, uh, yes. so our last group photo. So can you open your camera, everyone? Thank you. Come. Okay, ready with your smile. Mr. Okay. Amiro, uh, Mr. Saiful, can you open your camera also? Our PIC. <laughs> Okay, just get ready. I will just snap. Okay. All right, say, ah, uh, I don't know my. Yeah. Ah, uh, and disciple is okay. here. Okay. So we have complete set. Yeah. Okay, because okay. this picture will be in the farewell video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So my <laughs> Okay, one, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Free smile. <laughs> Okay, one, two, three. All right. Okay, nice thank work. you, everyone. Thank, thank you, Dr. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all for the question. Thank, thank you for the beautiful session. Looking forward, <laughs> looking forward to future collaboration, inshallah.